Hey guys, Dusty Baker of Cross Summers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. The rain is coming again, and uh, well, right now I'm surrounded by bison at the moment. Uh, I'm gonna feed them some cubes, and then uh, we're gonna throw some seed out. Don't make too much fun, but uh, I don't have a harrow yet, uh, but I do have a four by eight sheet of expanded metal. And what I'm gonna do is when we throw this seed out, I'm going to uh, pull this behind and try to shake up the ground a little bit because the rain is coming. Thank you guys for watching us today. I hope you enjoy another bison video. Got some crimson clover in here. It's nitro coated. I'm excited to use some of this. Got actually some deer plot mix, which has <clears throat> got a good variety of legumes, which is great for bison. And then we have oats in here. Just mixing it all in a feed sack, right like this. Um, bundle it all up and you see all the goodies in there. I'm mix it all up, shaking our bag a little bit. I know the the small stuff will end up towards the bottom first. I'm a little spreader here, champion of a spreader. Love it. Better than feeding chickens, but it'll work. Mix it up in here, pour up my little bag, and we're gonna be good to go. So this isn't bad. What this is is this is where an old fence was, fence line. It had a bunch of cedar and it. it had some 
hackberries and elm trees down in it about there you can kind of see where that line goes way down yonder that's where the new fence is about to go it's been wet here so much that um it's been hard to build fence all the pipe is ready got a t-post here and a t-post here for uh to tie one strand off of just so you can see because when you're down at the bottom of the hill you can't see so that's what these t-posts are for kind of keep it in line keep straight so we'll string one from way down there all the way across to here and then do the same thing over there so this is our hay meadow you can kind of see the difference in color of it and um that's a weight it's a drag to uh level some of this ground after the dozer went through here but uh take a look at this it's just beautiful how green it is over here guys this is the post burn unit that we burnt in october and we've been blessed to have some green grass we've been blessed to have some uh, precipitation it's been great here recently in the past month or so and really gave this thing a boost here recently and yes can't wait to do that it's going to be fun once this greens up a little bit and we probably get a, a a little north wind we'll be able to set that on fire don't want any south wind to come back over here not that there's a lot of grass here but this hay meadows has been untouched for uh, since uh july so we can burn that good thing is this greens all around it check this out guys we are at the kind of the back side of the property this is a another 80 acre stretch here kind of and what I wanted to show you was this uh, this pond here so this is kind of an old road that comes through here matter of fact it's an old railroad uh, there was a railroad at one time that went from sulfur to Davis and which is about seven miles apart it's really not that far apart but uh, you can kind of see the ridge and that's where this power line exists now that runs back here there's some huge mounds right back over here where you can really see this thing and where it took place but just uh something i wanted to show you is this pond i've honestly never seen water in it when the first time marissa and i came out here um, in 2021 as we were interested in this property this thing was completely dry and then as we were come to check on it and we're trying to get it and stuff it was still super dry guys i don't know when the last time this had, pond had water in it but um we've had so much moisture here in the past month like i said this thing has filled up and it is so awesome because there's uh only three ponds on the back half of this property on this 80 acres and then there's a hay meadow right over here which is about 39 ish acres something like that uh but here we need water for the bison if we're going to rotate them back here which i'm super excited to do that hopefully in uh, april we're able to do that uh, we're working on getting some of that fence finished um and then we'll be able to let them go here uh but to have places like this where and all of our ponds are completely full which is awesome and we hope that we keep getting some moisture so that it can get us through the summers the past two summers that we've had have been very rough and uh, as most of you may know if you followed us over the summer uh, we are almost all of our ponds went completely dry one of them went so dry i was able to get it cleaned out and uh, and um, made basically almost into a new pond uh, but places like this that i've never seen with water have water in it so very excited about uh, this and uh, hopefully soon when that fence is done which i'll keep you updated on we will have some bison out here
guys, there's something I just, uh, I got the call earlier today. I talked to Richard a couple of days ago. He's the guy who I always talk about and helps build fence for us. And um, he said, hey, I got that fence done and uh, I just need some gates. And yeah, that was a, a good call that I needed because uh, the fence is done. Okay. I don't know if you guys remember, but you can go back and watch. Um, I hired Richard out uh, to push a bunch of this tough, tough, thick timber right here. And here's some of it's actually left over right in here. But we cleared a lane. Uh, we tore out an old fence. And Richard then mostly did. I'm not going to take credit for it. But um, just because it, just with everything going on and time consumption, uh, Richard's got that dozer that could take, it'd be so much faster than the, the, the skid steer. Um, and so that's why we hired him out. And, um, so anyways, he just built a fence for us and I went and picked up some gates, uh, for this. I'm so excited because that means we are one more fence away from letting the bison into where this burn unit was. So you can kind of see the difference here between the hay meta and the burn unit. See the green? There's places of this hay meta that is green. And I'm covering up with my truck right now. But you could definitely see the difference between the burn unit and the hay meta. We cut hay off of this hay meta um, in July. And because there's a drought we were in, we only had one cut. But um, anyway, so very excited about this. We are a step closer to letting the bison out in this burn unit. That looks amazing. We've been blessed to get some rain and stuff. But um, that's, that's helped make that even greener. But... You can see a bunch of trees are still left here um, just because we were wanting to push them. And I told him I could get a bunch of these uh, cedar trees. These are some tall cedar trees. I could get a bunch of them with my skid steer uh, because they're not they're not too big. And uh, it wasn't a huge focus. Yeah, I probably should have just kept going. But, you know, it costs money to run that thing. <laughs> and uh, I was more worried about the fence than, the, than clearing just land. So um, you can see it here. But, uh, so something interesting is the next fence I can kind of show you right here. But, um, so there's the original fence of what is my neighbor to the east and then our property, which is obviously right here. This is the old fence. You can barely see it. I mean, it's, it's in rough condition. It is not in bison condition at all. But whenever the person that bought this land a couple years ago, he got it surveyed which is really nice and convenient because uh, I got mine surveyed too, but because he already surveyed this, they come through with these markers like this uh, T-post right here that's uh, colored orange at the top. So that is a marker of his land and the fence. There's actually a pink ribbon on it too. So what that means is the surveyor came out here and marked that spot of where it lines up. So this basically goes through these woods. You can't hardly see it. Maya's down there. But it goes north and south. And it stops right here at this corner. But this is the next fence that we're going to have to build. Obviously a little bit of clearing of this area to get through there. Um, but the good thing is, is now because this fence is off. See, here's the fence. You can see the gap there, right? There's a gap right there between that survey marker and the my neighbor's fence will join the fence but because of it's off that much i don't have to tear this fence down because it basically just becomes my neighbor's fence at this point because the survey was off whenever they built this fence they were off i guess and maybe not the survey was off but because this survey is only two years old was taken uh two, uh, two years ago this is what will go off of so that means we will not have to tear this out, which will cost us time and money to do that. We just basically scoot over and we'll build a new fence. And, um, you know, if my neighbor wants to help out, that's fine. But he doesn't raise any animals. You can see what most of his property is, is mostly wood. So that's fine. We can put up a bison fence, which is our typical six strands of barbed bar wire with a seven or six and a half foot T-post in the ground. So that's going to be the next thing and then this thing will be ready and uh it'll be fun to let them out here because this whole thing about this burn unit 
that we did back in October burning, I think 60 or 70 acres. There's a huge story behind that. There's a big background. There's a, there's a whole timeline on this thing um, that's part of this. And it's not just, oh, we burn it and that's the end of it. Oh, guys, Mother Nature has a way of creating really good things out of fire um, in most cases. And I'll say prescribed fire. Okay, so this is part of it. Right here, these little stubble was uh, blackberry bushes. But this landscape has completely changed because of that fire. And it's going to get better and better when we put bison on it. It's going to be amazing. Richard's pulling up. I'm going to go chat with him. We're going to hang these gates. You guys take a look at this right here you guys probably can't tell what this is but uh <laughs> the warm season the uh, weird oklahoma weather has jacked up these uh plants and uh the landscape here some already um even though we know it's going to get cold again and hopefully don't get another freeze but uh this is our state tree this is an oklahoma red bud and uh, they're absolutely beautiful and they're already starting to bloom in early march well, in Oklahoma, March and April, typically, uh, it, it, we don't get our hopes up because we always know, most Oklahomans know that um, March and April can bring another freeze, which will kill all your fresh growth of grass and typically your uh, tree growth like this early, um, like this early blooming here of this Oklahoma uh, red bud. One of my favorite trees, um, obviously the state tree, so you just got to love it. But I thought I'd show this to you guys. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Thank you guys for watching us. Stay tuned for a trip to Missouri on the next video. Marissa and Brooks and I are going to the uh, Route 66 Bison Roundup in Springfield, Missouri. Thank you guys for watching. See you soon.